so we stand upon your word and your word says you said all power is given unto thee in heaven and in earth and we are your sons so we command you God to move today like never before save someone speak to the preacher today as an oracle of God let your word flow through him like never before now God by the authority of your name we claim it and seal this word in the name of Jesus Christ so no devil can take this prayer from us it's in Jesus name we pray amen clap your hands oh ye people Psalms 150th Division. My stuff just wasn't right. That's why. That's fine. Thank you very much. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Him. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now I command Praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. I want to hear a sound of thunder from you. Praise God. Praise him in the highest. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever.
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's sing this song together. Glory to your name, Jesus.
Bibles this morning to the word of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. In the 28th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, in our Bibles today, the Gospel of the Kingdom, Matthew chapter 28, and one verse of scripture, verse number 20. So glad to see everyone that has gathered on the campus grounds this morning that is due unto his most high and excellent name. Action and divine covering that he has given us all week long and has brought us to another week safe from danger, seen and unseen. So Calvary family and all of our friends and neighbors that have gathered this morning and even that are listening throughout the neighborhood, we greet you this morning with the greeting of Shalom, which is peace, for our God is the God of perfect peace. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, amen. I'd like to lift my thought today directly from that verse. I am with you. I am with you. Wherever you are in your car, seated in the parking lot, just lift your hand before the Lord now. Father, we sit and stand in your presence with hands lifted to acknowledge you as God and God alone. Now we pray that your spirit would come and anoint us with fresh oil. Speak unto us by the power of the spirit and give us ears to hear all that God shall say to us today. In the mighty exalted name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. And every heart, everywhere, say amen. I am with you. When God created man, he never intended for man to have to navigate through this life alone. In Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 18, the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make and help me for him. And I will say to us this morning that the care, the companionship, the friendship of a loving spouse can be a source of great solace and strength along life's journey. The word of the Lord said, he that findeth a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. In Psalm 68 and verse number six, the word of the Lord said that God setteth the solitary in families. Our brothers, our sisters, our siblings, our uncles, our aunties, God parents, cousins, nieces, and nephews, they all add to the content and the quality of our lives. There is nothing more gratifying than the blessing of a family in terms of human relationships. So many days I just wish I could have one conversation with my mother. If I could just sit down with my daddy one more time and have some of his beans and greens and cornbread, it would make me feel all right. The things that you just kind of take for granted until those connections are severed and you don't recognize even though we have difficulties, even though sometimes we have disagreements, there is nothing in the world like your family but even with the companionship of a loving spouse even with the covering and the connection 
of the immediate and extended family. We all have seasons, we have circumstances, we have spaces in life where we feel alone. In those spaces and in those times, even the love and concern of a loving mother, even the protective paternal covering of a father or a husband cannot feel that space. And it's not because they don't love us. It's not because our family doesn't care. It's not because they are ambivalent or insensitive or indifferent. It is because there is a space in every human being's heart, in every person's soul, that God has reserved exclusively for himself. Many times when we find ourselves perplexed by life and its myriad of complexities, life has some difficult days. Life has some dark spots in the road. Things happen sometime in life that we don't understand why they happen and wonder where God is in that process. When these times come, our natural inclination is to seek help and to seek comfort from the arm of flesh. The word of the Lord said, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, some place their confidence in their seven and eight figure bank account, some's trust is in their real estate acquisition. Others' trust is in the might of the U.S. military, in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the National Guard. And I thank God for all of our men and women that serve and risk their lives to protect this nation. But I want to say to this congregation and to this viewing audience this morning, the United States now find itself in a position where no one can help us but God. The unrest, the uncertainty, the tension, the anger, the hostility that we feel in the atmosphere is a case for God himself. I rose this morning to remind us what Psalm 46 declares, that God is our refuge and our strength. God is the Yehovistic title Shama. God is very present. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's not just a God for the good times, he's a God for the bad time. He's not just God in life, he's God in death. He's not just God for the mountaintop experiences, he is the God of the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He is a very present help. I want you to know this morning that whatever it is that you are struggling with, whatever your challenge is, whatever your mountain, your worry, your anxiety, and your concerns are, God is here right now to help you at the point of your need. There's almost some type of instinctive inclination in all of us. When we find ourselves in dire straits, the first person that we'll look for is our mother. That's why that when that demonically possessed ex-police officer was pressing the life 
out of Mr. George Floyd with his knee on his neck. I'm told that Mr. Floyd's mother has been deceased for over two years. But in that moment of distress, he called for his mother. There's something instinctive in all of us that reaches out for the love, the concern, and the compassion of a loving mother. But I want you to know this morning, when trouble, when sickness, when marital and relational problems, when financial struggles and stress, when you've been just a short two years ago, in this very month of the month of June, when I was in St. Elizabeth Hospital in Boardman, Ohio, in 100% kidney failure. And I'll never forget the Sunday night that the nurse came in with a grim, ashy look on her face and said, Reverend Tyson, I'm very sorry to report that we are going to have to start you on dialysis immediately. And I recognize that many people have had some bad experiences with the church because in the church you got human beings in the church you have hypocrites in the church you got people with a double lifestyle but i want to admonish you this morning do not stake the eternal destiny of your soul on the people in the church but put your faith in the god of the church for it was jesus that said upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and friend i don't know what report you may have heard about the mount calvary pentecostal church i don't know what you read in the newspaper i don't know what you heard out in the street but this much i know this is a praying church with some praying people that know how to reach the throne of grace well when they said reverend tyson we got to start your own dialysis tomorrow i said sister nurse i appreciate your professionalism i thank you for your concern i thank you for the big picture but before we do any dialysis will you just let me ask the saints over at the mount calvary pentecostal church if they could pray for their preacher well we got to report over to the saints and saints immediately launched into an uncalled 24-hour prayer meeting some were praying in their homes some were praying on their jobs some were praying here in the church and sister martin blackwell the next night came into the room with her cell phone in her hand and she said look here pastor at the saints around the altar asking god to touch your body and when she put that phone in my hand a fire went from the top of my head to the sole of my feet and i knew i knew i knew i knew that god had touched my body well here come the nephrologist the kidney doctor about four hours after sister Manga left the room and when and when and when and when and when she walked in the room she didn't say good morning she didn't say hello you doing she said wow what a comeback i said what do you mean 
Jean's sister and the prologist out. She said, well, come on, Woody. Put that bass underneath my feet. Come on, Alex, and let me hit the devil two or three times. He said, well, well, well. On last night, your creat level was 11.1. You were in extreme kidney failure. But this morning, your creat level
church and put them under my heaven.
Yeah.
Nobody, nowhere can do you like Jesus. I don't care how good they are. I don't care how pretty they are. I don't care if you look like Denzel Washington and Gary Johnson. Can't nobody. Gary's my tall, dark, and handsome preacher. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. No one understands what it means to be in a place where you don't even have the words to express how you feel. He understands what it is to lose a loved one violently. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It was a violent death. Thank you, Elder. They nailed my Jesus to a rugged cross. They beat his visage beyond recognition. They whipped his back with the cat of nine tails until the flesh fell from his bone. They hung him between two thieves. And while they ostracized him, while they cursed him, while they looked upon his nakedness with glee and gladness, he looked toward heaven and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when he said forgive them, he wasn't just talking about those two thieves. He wasn't just talking about those that were gathered around the cross that cursed him and ostracized his name. When he said, Father, forgive them, yes. he was talking about me. He was talking about you. And the good news is this morning, it's better than good. The great news is, it doesn't matter what you've done or how long you've been doing it. Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus, the anointed one, yes. he is here in this place. So come lay down the burdens you have carried. It's too much for you. You can't make this journey by yourself. It's too many mountains you can't climb. It's too many deep rivers you can't cross. Too many unexpected tragedies in life. Too many traitors like Judas to try to make it through this life by yourself. There he is. Listen, friend, under the sound of my voice, 
Pastor Tyson, I know I need God to come in and take control of my life. I know I need a savior to save my soul and to forgive me of my sin. I need God to heal my body. I've tried every doctor, I've tried every medicine and I've gotten worse instead of getting better. This morning, I have come to offer you Jesus. He said, I will be with you. I am with you. But I want to come and be Lord of your life. I want to live on the inside of you. I want to forgive you of your sins. I want to wash you in my blood. This morning, I want you by faith. If you need a touch from the Lord, if you need God's forgiveness, if you need God's healing, I want you to come and stand across the front here, social distancing, but just come and stand across the front. Altar workers are going to help you. Just come stand across the front here and we're going to pray for you. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed. Just come stand across the front here. We're going to stretch our hands towards you. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. If you want to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sin, we'll baptize you right now. Everything is ready. I want to be right with God. I want to get my heart right. God has been dealing with me. Come. Will you come? I'm waiting for you. We're here. So come lay down. The burden. In the same chair, God is here. He is here. Come on, friend. I'm waiting for you. Come now. I'm waiting for you. You can come from your home, come from your porch. You don't have to be afraid. I'm happy to pray for you. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Come now. So come lay down. The burden. For in the sanctuary, God is here. Friend, let me say something to you. Never be fearful. Never be ashamed to come before God and receive prayer. The reason we do it this way is because Jesus said, if you will acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father which is in heaven. So whatever your problem is, there is an answer in the word of God. You see, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you come, it is a demonstration of faith, an outward showing of an inward belief. We'll pray with you and we believe that God will help you, that God will touch you. You may come at this time. The burden you have Whatever it is, it's not too hard for God. Let's go 
back and sing an old hymn together. You probably remember it, your grandmother. Your mother probably used to sing it when you were a child. We're going to lift it up to God because God wants to touch you. Those of you that desire prayer that are sitting in your cars, just stretch your hand out the window so I can see you. You need prayer, just stretch your hand. I see you. I see your hands. Come on, lift up this old hymn with me. We've got to get ready to go. Pass me not, old gentle say. Hear my humble cry. church this morning. We're so glad you came. We well, hope you've been blessed, that you've been encouraged, that you've been strengthened by the word of God. We're going to do as we do every Sunday morning. Bless you, Pastor. We're going to do as we do every Sunday morning. We're going to honor the Lord with the first fruits of our increase. Calvary, you know what to do. Let us continue to honor God in giving as you have been doing such an awesome and an excellent job on this first Sunday. Lift those hands if you want an officer to come by your car to receive the Lord's gifts. Just flash your lights or wave your hand at your car. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. Those of us that are giving online, via cash app or give the fire however you give the blessings of the Lord be upon you all how many of you like this outdoor service I have to admit I kind of like it out here so as long as the weather is favorable we will continue to worship God under the open heaven we're also looking at other locations where we will be able to take the gospel not only in our neighborhood, but we want to take the gospel out to Borden. We want to take it out to Canfield. We want to go out to Liberty. We want to go to Niles. We want to saturate the Mahoning Valley with the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
So we're meeting here for now and our friends that are viewing us on the World Wide Web in the Youngstown area, you are welcome not to just watch online, but you come, bring your lawn chair, bring your lemonade, bring your Bible, bring your bre breakfast bar. Did you say bring your ham sandwich? She says, Sam Meach. Just leave your Bud Light at the house, though. <laughs> this is holy ground. So we're going to keep it straight here and worship God in spirit and in truth. This coming Thursday night, the First Lady will be leading an online discussion at the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church Facebook Live page. How many of you have been blessed by uh, the Zoom panel discussions that we've been having? You see, the challenges that we're having in the country with race, racial issues, it cannot be fixed in courts of law. The law should come in alignment with equal justice for all, but this is a heart condition. So we must do as the Bible said, come let us reason together. And this Thursday night, the First Lady is facilitating a discussion, a mother's perspective on race relations in the United States, a mother's perspective. A lot of the emphasis has been on men and on young men, but we recognize that our mothers, our sisters, our daughters are all affected by this phenomenon of racial discrimination and God is depending on the church to lead the nation to a place of reconciliation through the love of God. So that's this Thursday night at 7 p.m. Now this coming Friday night, June the 12th, we are going to be meeting right here in the parking lot this coming Friday at 7 p.m for a special Calvary family meeting. I want to hear from you how you're making it through this process. I haven't had a chance to really see faces and connect with you. I want you to bring your lawn chairs. Friday night, we're gonna meet for one hour. We're going to talk to you about our re-entry process and the process that we are going through to prepare the house of God for the new changes that you will experience when you when we re-enter back into the house of God and just the overall ministry protocol going forward in this new season. So I need every saint that can be here to meet me here at 7 p.m. Now I will not be able to stream that meeting because it is a private church meeting. So I need you, if at all possible, and young people help me get all of the senior saints here so we can be together as a family and understand God's direction for us in this now season. Well, I'm happy to report that school is returning to Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. Now, as you know, our bishop was a leading advocate for education. And Calvary Christian Academy, along with Legacy Academy, educated hundreds, even thousands of young people and set them on the path of God's purpose and destiny for their lives. Help me thank God for Bishop Norman L. Wagner and his vision for education. Saints, it was nothing but God. The, the state director for charter schools in the state of Ohio, he called me. I did not call him. He called me, said, Pastor Tyson, we're looking to start a new charter school in Youngstown. And we know Bishop Wagner was such an advocate for education. We were just wondering if you have the same passion. I said, absolutely. He said, well, if you have the space, 
we have the students. And I'm happy to report this morning that the Brilliance Academy of Youngstown, Ohio, will be partnering with the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church and a representative from the Brilliance Academy, kindergarten through grade eight. The representative will be here on next Sunday and opening this fall, right here in the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church, the Brilliance Academy. Help me give God a good praise if you will. So next Sunday morning, that representative will be here and will tell you all about the school, tell you how you can enroll your children, your grandchildren if you desire to do so. And we're moving forward in the name of the Lord. Did I get everything? I got everything. I was getting ready to say, let us stand for the benediction. Let us honk for the benediction. Praise the Lord, everyone. As stated last Sunday, we, we're trying to re-enter our sanctuary. We want to prepare, so we're looking for volunteers. Anyone here that would like to volunteer, help us sanitize the building, clean, get things ready for re-entry, we ask that you call the corporate office. We're here on Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock, 330-747-4445, and let us know that you would want to be one of the volunteers to come and help us get our building ready to re-enter. Thank you in Jesus' name. Pastor Michael Scott, First Lady Janae Scott, come up here, son and daughter. Give God a good praise for the Scott family. I'm just glad to see Janae out. I'd hug you if it wasn't for social distancing. Some more. I'm gonna do there. What what's 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 the not, not, what was the movie? Oh, the Wakanda hug. <laughs> Pastor Scott and our daughter are transitioning to Texas. And we certainly want to pray God's blessing and favor upon them in their new assignment. And of course, Janae has been just a, a part of our heart and our ministry her whole life. So I already struggled when you took her from Calvary. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. You're gonna take her to Texas, they might have to shut down all the state borders. <laughs> I don't fool around, man, I'll pray and you won't be able to get in the state. <laughs> they say something to me. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's so good to be back on these grounds, these blessed grounds. I praise God um, for healing my body. Those who have prayed for me, I thank you and I appreciate your prayers. God definitely did the work. Um, my husband and I, we're so excited about this next phase of ministry and of life. And we know that God is with us and for us, that's enough. That's enough for us. So we, we thank you guys. Continue to cover us and um, just cover us in prayer. Um, you know, it's never an easy thing when you have to leave home. So, um, yeah, just continue to cover us in prayer. Amen. God bless everybody. Uh, I do thank God for the Mount Calvary family that has been so graciously praying with us and been in support uh, and have shown love. And uh, this is where... Uh, Janae has found her foundation and I thank God for that it's been a right foundation uh, we just ask you that you continue to pray for us that the Lord do his will and I know you will and, um, and then we will come back and visit but I know uh, Bishop and First Lady are praying with us and we thank God for them Amen Stretch your hands out those windows this way if you will Bless your name, Jesus. Let some of the ministers come and stand across the front here and stretch your hands toward this family. Mm -hmm. 
Asina ma tele de kosolo mahaiti ana. Son, the Spirit of the Lord said, Greater works than these shall ye do. A great grace from the Spirit of God is upon you. And the Spirit of God says, Prophesy. And when you open your mouth, saith the Lord, it shall be even as Samuel. Namando Bohoshe. Not a word shall fall to the ground. Father, make a plain path for their feet. May the steps of this thy son and our daughter be ordered by the Lord and directed by the divine providence of the Holy Spirit. For known unto thee are all thy works before the foundation of the world, before they were formed in their mother's belly. You knew them and ordain them to be prophets unto the nation. Now may the Holy Spirit go before our son and plow the fertile ground where the seed of the word of God that has been planted in him and in our daughter shall be planted in a new spiritual vineyard. For the fields are white with harvest, saith the Lord, and from the ground shall spring forth a great harvest of souls. Now, Father, I call into real time the prayer that Bishop Wagner prayed over Janae when she was brought before the altar as a baby. Every promise of God that was spoken over her life shall now soon and suddenly manifest and i pray in jesus name that the spirit of infirmity that has attempted to attack her body i rebuke it and bind it in the name of the lord jesus i declare her body off limits to the infirmity and the sickness and disease that the enemy has attempted to inflict upon her loose her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, make this young man's hands as the hands of Moses. When Aaron and Hur stood on both sides and he lifted his hands and the people experienced victory over the Amalekites, I speak the spirit of victory over his ministry, over his family, over his destiny. And, oh God, empower him with a double portion of his father's spirit and mine. And it is so in Jesus name. Help me celebrate their great future. Bless your son, bless your daughter. God go with you and ahead of you. Well, you already know how I feel about Jesus. If anybody asks you what my thoughts are about him, tell them he's all right with me. He's just all right with me. God bless you, saints. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. And I'll see you.